Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're gonna take a look at a report from Prohibition Partners, uh, looking at an overview for North American cannabis, diving right into it. 2020 was obviously a terrible year with the pandemic, but we did see Canada have a 2.0. We saw a bunch of states go legal after the election. Uh, in November. So we're going to take a deep dive into the current state of the cannabis industry looking at US and Canada. So it's estimated that we're going to see sales increasing at a rate of 144% between 2020 and 2025. As they um, put a dollar amount on that at $39 billion at that point. That's primarily fueled by new states. You know, we did see New Jersey and Arizona, um, Montana, North Dakota, and then Missouri with their medical. So as more states, Virginia, you got even Canada, I mean, not Canada, you have Mexico looking at legalization. Um, Israel is about to follow suit. Vermont just said that they're on board. It's going to take them a few years to figure their, their stuff out. But looking at new states kind of increasing that that growth, um, just at some point, we're going to need federal legalization to be able to cross cross state lines. Unfortunately, medical cannabis kind of has a an inverse uh, graph or growth uh, relative to the rec market. So uh, the higher the rec market goes, the worse off medical ends up being until it's just completely dismantled. So not really sure how that's going to be integrated back into the system. Uh, hopefully at some point, though, we'll see uh, the future of medical being um applicable to people who have serious ailments where it's targeted. That's obviously going to take FDA uh, involvement. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. So as I mentioned in November, the elections uh, had a, a huge impact on the cannabis industry. Everyone was really anticipating some sort of, of legalization, um, not just because it was democratically con controlled with the House and the Senate and the, um, the president. But this administration is interesting because Kamal Harris said while she was running for president that she smoked, she inhaled, uh, and how hip and cool she is. And then yet Biden just fired everybody, all the staffers that had ever admitted to using cannabis, just right out fired them. So that happened, you know, uh, late, you know, or mid-March. So um, not looking too good on that side. He, uh, he being... Biden feels that if he were to endorse cannabis, that would mean that Trump would be reelected. And so he's definitely not going to do anything cannabis related in the next few years, uh, knowing that Trump is going to come back um, in 2024. That's not stopping lobbyists from throwing a bunch of money at it, though. Apparently, contributions to cannabis legalizations reached over $30 million, which uh, was bigger than other contributions that only got $1.9 million. Uh, for opposition. So right after the election, we saw a lot of cannabis stocks um, just skyrocket in price. There's been some profit taking, some correction. Um, it's about to get pretty nasty, I think, in, in the overall market. There's uh, It's not looking too hot uh, between now and maybe September when there might be a rebound. It's going to take uh, something like New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New Mexico, trying to push for their own reform for uh, any kind of news to... Um, you know, pop on, on cannabis. Crypto's really hot right now and uh, tech is as well. So I have to see what happens with this administration. Otherwise, it might be a sideways market for the next three years. One thing that could help is the MORE Act. If we saw something with banking that had substantial uh, impact in the industry to allow for lending, borrowing, regular banking, you know, let's just start with that. Um, so there could be a lot more reform. There was, uh, you know, like I mentioned, the MORE Act, the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expunge Act that passed the House in December 2020. So looking for that to get to the Senate, uh, that's going to decriminalize and remove cannabis from the Controlled Substances Act, um, which would be nice as long as it doesn't get to, act, um, to Schedule 2. That would make it entirely um exclusive to big pharma definitely don't want that so hopefully um that'll pass sometime soon although with midterms coming up um you know next year the democrats may lose uh if they don't follow through with a lot of their promises which they haven't which and i don't think they will i think biden is on his own uh, path. He ha he's just kind of a, a puppet to uh, the people in control. And eventually, um, he, he is, in my opinion, that he's going to follow through with his 
first term and then hand it over to Kamala. He's going to increase taxes already the highest it's been in 30 years since 1993 and um, continue on his own course. And then he will just retire and then leave it up to Kamala's uh, Kamala to be popular or whatever and get reelected and beat Trump. He has no intention of, of doing anything. And I think that's what we've seen. He failed on his promise for the $2,000 stimulus to even work at it, failed on his minimum wage, failed on uh, trying to get kids out of uh, prison cells and in, in, in the, in the, uh, the South at the border in these, um, you know, freezing lockers. Uh, basically everything, but he's a politician, just like all of them. So, you know, if you uh, think bureaucrats are going to do anything different, then I don't know. Um, anyways, moving on. <laughs> the MORE Act is trying to look at something like a implementation of a social equity program um, for those that are heavily impacted on the war on drugs. So hopefully um, something of that nature will come about. There's far too many individuals of, of color, the minorities that had licenses in medical, and when it goes to rec, they all fall out. We've seen it up and down the West Coast. Um, so hopefully some of these other states, including Illinois and Michigan, Washington, Oregon, all looking at social equity programs. I don't think Canada is looking at social equity programs, but their sales in 2020 reached $1.8 billion. Looks like uh, medical sales are only 260 million. So, Prohibition Partners estimates that cannabis sales will reach 3.2 billion by 2025. A lot that the, the rollout of 2.0 would immediately move to an increase in sales. Um, I know Canada is also impacted heavily by the weather, especially you know in the Northeast. They kind of get locked down, delivery, whatever. It's I don't know, maybe they just hoard up, but sales kind of dip in the winter up there. I find that interesting. But with the 2.0 sales, including the concentrates and beverages and um, all those additional products that they were allowed to roll out after the first year of only having you know, flour and, and minimal uh, SKUs available, um, sales have began to disappoint. So selling off of greenhouses and really cutting back, um, you saw massive mergers. Uh, I think we'll start to see more consolidation as uh, Canadian LPs are going to start to lose market share to U.S. companies um, as people see that those prices up there are a little bit inflated, a little bit more speculation. And then with the U.S., they're going to try to get down uh, and invest in, in those companies once uh, they pop for an IPO or a reverse takeover. Not to understate the pandemic, it did have a huge impact. Um, saw a lot of companies roar and canopy. They saw some layoffs and closures, like I mentioned, um, all affected by changes in their expectations of, of future development, right? So um, strategic partnerships that they had with Columbia, those folded because the Canadian government started to get a little bit uh, protected. So that protectionism didn't, wouldn't really allow for importation. So they had to kind of change their their strategy up a little bit. But the essential business of cannabis did help. A lot of edible sales help while maybe tinctures and topicals suffered during the pandemic. Uh, we did see a shift from alcohol to cannabis uh, as the you know adult use market and sales for cannabis led to record high sales on a monthly basis. We can look at Oregon as an example for that. So you can kind of see month over month, just the increase uh, from 2019 to 2020, um, you know, for March, for example, 37% increase all the way up in May, 60% increase. Um, and then, you know, August 31% increase. So um, no doubt people were buying more either to kind of hoard it or have it on, on um, hand in California. They're always buying $65 on average because that's the minimum amount for delivery. So there's all these different reasons of consumer behavior, kind of trends and um, uh, product changes and preferences, all of that. So um, a lot of, um, issues or, or, or focuses being looked at on, um, you know, the economy or the regulations, um, certain health trends with um, FDA lock, you know, sending out letters, cease and desist to CBD companies. So we'll see some impacts from the 2020 elections. Uh, the specialty purpose acquisition companies or SPACs are going to have a huge impact on companies being able to go public and having increased capital. Um, we saw the vape crisis kind of go through its thing in 2019 and with the rollout of 2.0 uh, 2 up in Canada, um, 
a lot of discrete buyers, especially people like Arizona, you're going to see a massive rise down there, not so much in pre-rolls until the culture can change. That's going to require federal cannabis reform to some degree, uh, social equity programs to allow for everyone to get involved um, and have to take a look at uh, end year results for cannabis 2.0 up in Canada, kind of see how they're going to pivot to stay relevant in the eventuality that uh, legalization happens at the federal level in the U.S. and a lot of those companies begin to increase their um, market and profitability and start taking some market share as well as shareholders. So we'll have to see how the pandemic rolls out. You just have to come back to the Talking Hedge and find out. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.